In the last episode, we have expanded our program memory to fetch 16 bits in a single cycle, and we have reconnected most of the program counter control wires to our new 16-bit instructions. Uh, but we're not entirely done yet. So this um, select line here into the program counter, uh, this is currently tied low, just so we're in stepping mode constantly. But we want to drive this again from the uh, instruction word that we that we've read out. So if we reconnect that as we had um, before, so basically the two least significant bits are driving the select line here of the program counter and basically choosing whether we step to the next instruction or we do a relative or an absolute jump. Um, this now allow allows us to actually encode a program again in these instructions. Um, but what we have to do is we have to update the, um, the instruction encoding in general and then specifically uh, manually recompile the program we have in this uh, flash chip here because we've upgraded to 16-bit instructions. So the, uh, the instruction encoding has changed. So let's actually take a look at that. So we've updated our encoding uh, of, the, of the instructions uh, by expanding to 16-bit instructions. So I think it's a good idea to uh, go in and update our instruction set architecture to, to kind of reflect uh, what has been going on. So the connection setup we had earlier on, where we basically said we have eight bits and the lower two bits are used as selectors for the program counter and the upper four bits are the jump address. This has now changed. We now have a full eight bits as the uh, jump address at the top. And then we have four additional as of yet unused bits uh, in the least significant byte of the instruction uh, with the uh, select line uh, connected to the least significant bits there. Um, so this is actually going to change the encoding here as well. So this is going to stay the same, um, but there's more inputs at the top. So this all shifts um, to the right. Uh, and then for uh, the actual jumps that we uh, are able to do, um, this has to move over as well. So this is how the individual fields are encoded. Um, so now let's look at the instructions we had down here. These need to be updated as well. So the NOAA basically stays the same. Um, it's just two bytes long instead of one byte, because all we have to do is uh, put the program counter into stepping mode, and then the upper uh, bits of the instruction are pretty much don't care. And we're just setting that to, to zero for now. Then the relative chump, the chump immediate, has grown to eight bits. And then we have these uh, upper four bits in the uh, lower byte of the instruction, which we're not, not using at the moment. Similarly, for the absolute chump, the absolute address is now uh, covering the entire upper byte of the instruction. And the lower byte has gained uh, four more bits, which we aren't using at the moment. That also means that the hexadecimal encoding changes. So we have uh, two uh, positions that correspond to the relative chump offset and then an entire byte for the lower half of the instruction. And the same here for the absolute jump. And then we also have our pseudo instructions. The halt instruction is a relative jump with offset zero. So we're basically jumping in place and just keep jumping to the same address we're currently at. Um, but the difference now is that um, these upper four bits here, they have become eight bits. And then there's the four bits in the uh, lower part of the instruction, which we haven't connected. So the halt instruction basically looks like this now. And similarly for the reset, uh, we're basically jumping to address zero uh, with an absolute jump. So again, the upper four bits that were the address before our changes uh, are now a full eight bits. And then there's the uh, four bits in the lower part of the instruction which aren't used. So this is our reset instruction. Uh, so if we go in down here and actually re-encode this program, uh, let's see if we can make this work. So the first knob, what we did with the knobs is we used the upper four bits to encode just some arbitrary numbers. Uh, basically, we had a counter for the number of knobs that already have passed. So we could basically see, okay, this is the knob, uh, the first knob, this is the second knob, third, fourth, fifth knob, and the sixth knob. So let's try to keep, uh, keep it like that. So the upper byte is going to be a one. And then for it to be a knob, the lower byte needs to be a zero. And let's do that for all the knobs. The upper byte, which is the first two characters, is just a counter. And then the lower byte is uh, all zeros, which encodes the knob. 
Now to the jump relative instruction. The jump relatives are now encoded like this. So two hex characters or eight bits encoding the immediate, uh, which is uh, the jump offset, and then a zero and a one uh, for the actual encoding of the, of the jump. We just have to insert the appropriate zeros here. Same here. Now this backwards jump here is interesting because it has a negative jump offset. So basically we need to maintain the two's complement of this, uh, of this number properly. Uh, because we now have uh, eight bits at our disposal, not just four. We need to actually expand this to the full eight bits. So this B that we had before is now an FB because we had to fill in the uh, upper four bits with all ones to, to make this work. And then the reset we've encoded here, it's just a 0002. Now, another thing we need to take care of is the instructions are now two bytes. So if this on the left here is our address in the program memory, the second instruction can no longer be at uh, address uh, one because the previous instruction basically covered the knob we have here, basically covers address zero and address one because it's two bytes in size. So the next instruction is actually at byte two. And then the next one over is at four and at six and eight and 10 and 12 and 14 and then at address 16 and address 18. But now this also means that the jump offsets that we had here uh, have changed. So to jump from this location here, um, remember we wanted to change uh, three instructions ahead, which is basically one, two, three, jump to this knob down here. Um, this is no longer three bytes ahead, but if we uh, compute the distance between the 0, 8, which, which is where we want to go, and the 0, 2, which is where we are, this is now a 6 byte jump. So we update this to a 6. And then similarly, this absolute jump down here um, wanted to jump to address 8. And address 8 was uh, this line down here, the knob just before the reset. So this is no longer at address 8, but it's now at address um, 16. So it's a hex 10, basically. And then the knobs, of course, they stay the same. Um, but jump relative is a similar story again. Um, previously, we wanted to jump back five instructions, which is one, two, three, four, five to this point here. But now we need to keep in mind that the instructions are two bytes each. So this is actually a jump back by 10 and not just by five. So this also changes the uh, value we have to plug in up here. So it's not no longer uh, minus five, but it's a minus 10. So if we take a look at what a minus 10 is in 8-bit 2's complement, uh, it's an F6 and not an FB. So we need to update this here as well. And then the same goes up here, the uh, jump offset here. It's no longer um, an 8, but it's a 16, so a hex 10, uh, which is basically this value. And then similarly, the very first relative jump we have, it wants to do a plus 6 relative jump. So uh, we have to update this to a 6 as well. Otherwise, uh, things won't work at all. But now uh, most of this should actually be taken care of and we have a uh, proper addressing of the instructions, which uh, honors the fact that the addresses are two bytes in size. Uh, and we have a proper hexadecimal encoding here. And now what's left to do is actually update the binary encoding here because we might want to have an easy, easy time uh, comparing what's coming out of the, um, of the program memory on the board where we see 16 bits light up. Uh, we might want to have an easier time comparing this against the program we're running just to make sure we, we know what's going on. So all that's left to do is actually write this um, new program here to, to the program memory. Uh, and for that, let me quit out of uh, Python here. So let's read back the contents of the uh, flash memory so we have something to modify. There we go. And uh, let's convert this from binary uh, to hexadecimal. And now let's take a look at this, uh, at this thing. As you can see, this is still the old program. Um, this is the uh, knob that we had before, the jump relative, uh, not a knob, jump absolute, etc., etc. 
So what we need to do now is um, basically type in this program here, down here, and write this back into the flash memory so we can execute off of this uh, program. Uh, this here is listed Lidlandian, so this is byte 0, byte 1, byte 2, 3, 4, etc. So uh, we have to make sure that we type these up correctly. So the lower byte, which is this one here, is going to go here. So that's a 0, 0, 0, 1. That's our knob. Then we have a 0, 1, 0, 6, which is the relative chump. Then we have a 0, 0, 0, 2, another knob. Then a 0, 2, 10, which is uh, an absolute chump to address 10. Then the next one over is 0, 0, 0, 3, which is uh, knob number 3. Then we have 0, 0, 0, 4, knob number 4, knob number 5. Then we have a relative chump um, with offset F6, which is minus 10. Then another knob, knob number 6. And then we have the reset instruction. Now one thing that's kind of handy, uh, right after the program ends, so after the reset, let's make the um, next two bytes all ones, so FF, FF. And this way we can see if we run past the, the end of the program, we can just see the instruction word light up. All right, um, let's convert that back to binary and write it to uh, the chip. All right, so that's the program flashed uh, into this chip. So let's uh, remove this from here and let's put it back in place here. And now let's uh, power this up and take a look if we can step through the program. So this already looks quite promising. We are getting out of the uh, program memory the uh, instruction 0100, which is the knob we had. And so if we step the uh, clock generator out of reset, there we go. Um, if I hit step another time, uh, we should go to um, address uh, 2, which should be the next instruction in the program. So that's perfect, that's address 2. And the next instruction in the program appears to be a 0601, which corresponds to the relative jump that we had. We step over that and we do a relative jump to um, address uh, 8. And address 8 is instruction 0300, a knob. Um, basically two more knobs follow. So this is a knob 0500. And then the next instruction is gonna be uh, another jump. And exactly that is the case. Now we're at address 0E, which is 14. And this is the instruction F601, which is our jump relative uh, backwards by 10. And if we execute that, we're going to jump uh, 10 steps backwards, which is going to take us to address 4. And address 4 has the uh, instruction 0200, which is uh, another one of our knobs. And then if we step over that, we are at address 6, and address 6 has the instruction um, 1002, which is our absolute jump to um, address hex 10. So let's see if um, the address hex 10 up here gets copied properly into the program counter. Doesn't seem to be the case. So it looks like um, the uh, absolute jump address is connected uh, the wrong way around because we were expecting to see um, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then four zeros, but we're seeing four zeros, a one, and then 0, 0, 0. It looks like this is reversed. So this thing here is the culprit. Let me uh, flip that around, and let's see if we can get this thing to work with this new arrangement afterwards. So having to fiddle with these wires like this is probably a good indication that the uh, program counter breadboard uh, we have up here, we should probably convert to a PCB rather sooner than later. So let's see, uh, let's reset the program and see if we can uh, make this work uh, this time around. So let's step through the uh, reset sequence here. So we start at zero. And now the culprit was at address um, zero 06. So at some point there will be a jump where we jump to address zero 04, and then address zero 06 is the absolute jump that, that uh, didn't work before. 
So let's see what happens here. Let's step through the program quickly and uh, let's see what happens afterwards. So that's a knob, jump relative plus six, knob, knob, and another knob, jump relative minus 10. And now we're at address four. Um, there's another knob here. And now we are at address six. Address six is uh, again the uh, 1002 instruction, um, which is the absolute jump. So now what we should see happen is this value here in the operate bits should be copied into the program counter. And it sure is. All right, so now we are at address um, 16, so hex 10. And hex 10 is a knob. And the next instruction, address hex 12, um, is the instruction 0002, which is the reset instruction. And technically it's just an absolute jump to address zero. So if I hit step, uh, it's copying um, address zero up here and basically the, the program starts again. And we should now be able to actually let this run on its own and it should just step through the program. All right, this is very nice. And basically uh, we can do a lot of interesting things already. We can jump around uh, quite significantly in the program, uh, but we still have six bits of the instruction which aren't accounted for. So we might want to use some of these upper bits to encode more instructions or to um, store uh, a, a register address uh, in, in some of these bits. As a next step, I think our CPU actually needs a few registers, such that we can keep a handful of values around somewhere that we can actually run some computations on. Thanks a lot for watching, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this, and see you next time.